In this episode, we're going to talk about a limited prep feature for bed bug services, meaning don't do all that prep work that a lot of pest control companies ask to do in a public housing setting. Everybody to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. In today's episode, we're actually going to talk specifically to the public housing sector. And so all you housing authorities out there, all you HUD-funded properties, you know, obviously many of you are dealing with bedbugs. And so one of the things that I know many of you battle, especially in senior living situations, is extensive prep. And so, you know, you've got companies coming in and they're, they're saying, okay, you've got bedbugs in Mrs. Johnson's unit. She's 75 years old. Uh, here's the prep list that she has to complete. Um, and you know, you look at that prep list and it's empty dressers, empty closets, empty this, empty that, stand this up, stand that up. And you look at Mrs. Johnson and she's 75 and there's absolutely no way she's going to be able to do any of these things. And so it turns into a battle with you and the pest control company. You know, how do I go about this? Do I really need to do all this? What is going on? And so one of the things that we know is that in situations, a lot of that prep may not be necessary. And so let's quickly talk about the, the, the is it necessary or not, then we'll talk about the rest of it. And so the first thing I want to say is, listen, the pest control company may be asking that for a lot of different reasons. And me as the outside expert, you know, I can't tell you that you have to tell that pest control company you're not doing it. You know, you're going to get into a contractual with that pest control company. But let me talk a little bit about the concept of it, and then you can challenge it a little bit. And so when it comes to prep, the thought process behind it is, well, if there's a bug hiding in a nightstand, if there's a bug hiding in the clothes in a dresser, you know, if I don't pull those clothes out and launder them, or if Mrs. Johnson doesn't pull the clothes out and launder them, you know, we'll never get rid of those bugs. And so there's a couple different ways to think about this. One, most of the bed bug infestations that people deal with are in fact low level problems. And what that means is that there's typically 20 bugs or less inside of that unit. And, and let's say 100 and less bed bugs makes up probably 80 to 90% of the work that most pest control companies do or most housing authorities experience. And so when there's, let's say, 27 bed bugs inside of a bed, what do you think the odds are that there are bugs hiding in the clothes in the dresser? The odds are very unlikely. And even if there is one bug in there, what does that bug have to do? It has to come out of those clothes and feed. And so one of the things that we'll use as part of our services are under the leg interception devices. And what these devices do is they go under the leg of the bed or couch, and as the bug comes out of the clothes, the one bug, and goes to the bed to feed, hopefully it climbs up the outside of this device, falls in the trap well, and can't get out. And so it's a device that we use to help our limited prep approach work. Now, where I'm going with this is that if there's only one bug or no bugs in that dresser, and in most of your infestations they shouldn't be in that dresser, is it really necessary? And I'm going to challenge that I think in 80% or more of your different bed bug infestations, you shouldn't have to touch anything. And research actually has suggested at a Rutgers University that in public housing situations, they handle 95% of bed bug infestations with no involvement from the tenant. And so when we look at a lot of those preps, listen, I am not going to tell you that prep work is not necessary in certain situations. If Mrs. Johnson let the bed bug infestation get to 2,000 bed bugs, there very well could be bed bugs in those items. And so where, and they may, they then may have to be addressed. Where I'm going with this is that prep should be specific to the infestation and the infestation size. If there's six bed bugs there, emptying everything out and turning everything over is completely unnecessary. It's a total waste of time, and you just get into an argument with everybody about the situation. But if there's 10,000 bed bugs in there, it may be necessary. And so the bottom line here is to all my public housing people watching this is, listen, don't just do things just because. Cater your recommendations to the situation that you're dealing with. If Mrs. Johnson's got 10,000 bed bugs, yes, what the, the pest control company is asking to be done may be necessary in order to solve the problem. Now, how you handle that, I don't have any easy answers to. In senior living situations, many times I've gotten social housing involved. Uh, not social housing, social services involved, uh, to help me deal with that client because I know they're not going to have the mental capacity or physical capacity to do it. 
But the bottom line is, is that if Mrs. Johnson only has 14 bed bugs, or even 50 bed bugs for that matter, is turning everything over in her house going to help? Probably not. And is it going to complicate things? Very likely may. Now listen, I may come in as a pest control professional in that 50 bed bug infestation and notice bed bugs in the nightstand. And then I may have Mrs. Johnson address the nightstand, not everything inside the house. Empty that nightstand out, whatever the case may be. And so the bottom line of this, and in conclusion, is listen. I'm not going to tell you that prep isn't necessary at times. It absolutely can be and it is. But in my opinion, whole scale prep is probably only necessary in 10% of your units. And some targeted prep may be necessary in 20 to 30%. But in a good majority of them, if the pest control company is doing a good, good treatment protocol, nothing should be necessary. You shouldn't have to touch anything in 70%, 50%, whatever the case may be. It'll differ by property. So the bottom line is, is use this information to think a little bit about what you're doing and the extent of the infestations that you have on your property and try to come to an understanding with your pest control company about what the best way moving forward is. If you have any questions, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com and I hope to see everybody soon enough.